physics we are discussing about lasers and optical fiber myself dr sandeep desai department of basic science and humanities kids college of engineering kolhapur today we are going to discuss about some introductory part of optical fiber optical fibers are the thin cylindrical cables through which the information is carried by the light that is very useful in communication and that is used in number of applications nowadays so we are going to see in this session the basic principle of optical fiber but before that let's discuss some introductory part of optical fiber in 1870 john tyndall a british physicist who demonstrated that light can be confined in stream of water by total internal reflection Then, in 1950, Hopkins and Capani developed the flexible fiber scope, that is, fiber optics, and that was used in medical application to see the interior of human body. It was Capani who coined the term fiber optics. In 1966, Charles Cao and George Hukam proposed the transmission of information over glass fiber. but during those time the glass material which was used in making optical fiber has lot of attenuation problem as in 1970 corning glass work produced low loss glass fibers then after that commercial communication system based on optical fiber appeared fiber optic is a technology in which signals are converted from electrical into optical signal and those are transmitted through the glass fiber and converted into electrical signal again so now let's see the basic principle behind the working of optical fiber that is total internal reflection but before that to understood total internal reflection we must understood the phenomena of a refraction here you may see in this particular figure that we have two media rarer and denser medium which is separated by certain boundary if a ray of light incident on a denser medium then as we know the properties of light that light travels in a straight line it should travel like this in this straight line but as it enter into this medium it changes its path and follows this particular path which is known as a refracted ray so at this point of incidence if you draw a normal to the surface the angle made by incident ray with the normal is called as angle of incidence and this refracted ray whatever it makes angle with the normal is called as angle of refraction represented by r so this is the phenomenon of refraction so what is refraction a refraction is a phenomena in which light ray changes its path as the medium is change in this particular phenomena it is observed that it follows certain laws the first law is snell's law that is very important snell observed that the relation between angle of incidence and angle of refraction he found that for a particular pair of rarer and denser medium sin of angle of incidence is directly proportional to the sin of angle of refraction here if you remove the proportional sign we take a constant and that constant is represented by this mu or n which is known as a refractive index this is called as a refractive index refractive index of second medium with respect to first and that is given by the ratio of sin of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction second important thing to say this phenomena as a refraction that is incident ray a refracted ray lie on opposite side of normal as we see here this is a incident ray this is a refracted ray and these two lie on opposite side of normal third important law is this incident ray normal and refracted ray those must lie in same plane the law of reversibility what it says if we reverse this path of light ray 
as you may see in this figure light is traveling from rarer to denser if i change this direction and if suppose the light is get incident in denser medium and if suppose it is refracted in a rarer medium then again you find that it follows the same path it means this angle of refraction it becomes angle of incidence now and this angle of incidence previously whatever we had that becomes angle of refraction so this light ray when the path is changed reverse it then also follows the same path so that is known as law of reversibility by this we can say that refractive index of second medium with respect to first is equal to 1 upon a refractive index of first medium with respect to second one more observation you see that when light ray travels from rarer to denser medium the ray bends towards the normal but when a ray is traveling from denser to rarer as you may see here okay if this is a ray which is traveling from denser to rarer it should follow this path but here you find it bends away from the normal so remember that when light travels from rarer to denser it bends towards the normal and when light travels from denser to rarer it bends away from the normal if you understood this then hopefully you can understood uh, the total internal reflection in a better way so let's see what is total internal reflection you may see in this figure that this is a denser medium this is a rarer medium and if a light is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium as you may see this that if light ray is incident along this particular path then it should follow this dotted line as i shown here this is by dotted line but as it is traveling from denser to rarer it bends away from the normal okay and it travels in this direction it travels in this direction if i further increase this angle of incidence in denser medium it again bends from the normal increase this angle of incidence at a particular angle of incidence in denser medium we find that this refracted ray makes a 90 degree angle with the normal then this particular angle is known as critical angle so critical angle is the angle of incidence in denser medium for which this angle of refraction is 90 degree now if we increase this angle of incidence further then you find that these rays which are incident at an angle greater than critical angle those are reflected back a rays of light incident all those are going to be get reflected back in the same medium they will not refract in the rarer medium so it means after this critical angle we will be get only and only reflection and that is known as total internal a reflection here by knowing this particular idea of critical angle we can find the relation between a refractive index of this denser medium and critical angle which already i mentioned over here how we can get that particular relation so it's very easy as we know by snell's law we have a refractive index of second medium with respect to first is equal to sin of i upon sin of r so here this rarer medium is a second medium and denser medium is a first medium that is light traveling from denser to rarer that's why know that by law of reversibility a refractive index of first medium with respect to second if i write then i can write it as 1 upon refractive index of second medium with respect to first so the refractive index of first medium with respect to second as per this relation we can write from the first relation as sin r upon sin of r now as we want to find out the refractive index of glass glass is a first material with respect to a rarer material that is air that is equal to sin of r now sin of r for this angle of incidence sin of r we had taken r is 90 degree and when r is 90 degree the angle of incidence in denser medium we write it as critical angle now sin of 90 degree we know it is 1 so we can write refractive index of glass with respect to air as 1 upon sin of c 
So this is very simple uh, relation, simple derivation. Now as we know the introduction and basic principle of optical fiber, let us see what are the things you remember. So here are three questions which you are supposed to answer. The first question is what are the conditions required for total internal reflection? Think over it and tell me. Yes. So there are two important conditions which need to be followed to get total internal reflection. The first condition is a ray should travel from denser to a rarer medium. This is the first important condition. And second important thing is the angle of incidence, let me say theta i, it must be greater than that of critical angle. Then only we can get the total internal reflection. The second question is, can you answer some other applications of total internal reflection? Yes, there are lot many applications of total internal reflection. To increase the brilliance of precious stones as well as in periscope which is used to see this sea surface object by sitting in a submarine we can use total internal reflection. There are many natural phenomena where total internal reflection occurs like in formation of rainbow or mirage total internal reflection that is observed there. Let's see then third question. What is the critical angle for water if its refractive index is 1.33? And this particular problem we can solve by using this particular formula. As we know mu is equal to 1 upon sin c. Now here if refractive index that is mu is given to us 1.33 and here it is asked to calculate the critical angle for water air surface. So from this relation we can write C is equal to what we can write C is equal to sine inverse of we can write 1 upon mu and if you simplify this you will get the value of critical angle which is nearly equal to 53 degree for water. I hope you understood this basic principle of total internal reflection. Thank you.